<clears throat> Synchronicity. Let's go. Do it. What's going on, Thomas? It's chilling. It's chilling. Sunday. No children. No voice. Perfect for a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Sensational. What's going on? You do seem to be in a slightly better mood than the last few, uh, but we'll see if we can... I felt like I was pretty high energy last week. Yeah, you were, but... Um, do you, you listen? Yeah, yeah, I listened to that one. You did get pretty stabby at one point. Yeah, man was on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> Had to remove all sharp objects from the office otherwise. So we're now sitting in a proximity in which I feel under threat. Oh. Yeah, it'd probably actually hit you if you threw something. <laughs> What's going on? You were recording. You're doing pre-production. Yeah, now. pre-production. We got. We're trying to do an LP, which uh, is usually you know probably still be ten minutes worth of music. Yeah, being a hardcore band, but yeah, it's it's good. Yeah, jump in last night, lay down ten tracks, and then go back in two weeks time. Hopefully, walk away with an album. How do you do it now? Like, because I know. Where are you? Where are you recording it? First of all, uh, we're doing it out of Sumo with our mate Ronnie. Yeah, I used to be. I used to have a room upstairs. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so. Have you been up there? No, we weren't upstairs. We were in the downstairs. Like you wouldn't like upstairs. It's like a clockwork orange. Like it's like there's all panels all over the floor and shit. Yeah, and it's super <clears throat> low. Like I had to crouch to be in there. Yeah, I believe it's that. The hottest place on earth. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of cool, but it was also. Super fucking weird. Next time you're in there, just go up. Yeah, it was good. like we did it last night, so I don't know if it was open or anything. But um, yeah, that that spot is really cool. Yeah, it was sick. Well, we haven't recorded there before in the past. You know, it's a great room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really good. Like <clears throat> all of us were in there and were like, "Oh, cool. This is how it sounds." Yeah, because they're used to jamming. Like we jam a little place in North Perth, which is a little bit shitty and that kind of thing. But you know, it comes with territory. It's meant to sound shitty. Did you grow up <laughs> playing in bands? No. No, no, I did. That was that's your, what you're describing, like the shitty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was like my mm. seventeen to twenty five. I remember three times a week. Up here, gone. Yeah, dog. And she, I, you I remember one seeing of the only ones. That were I remember there. seeing you live. Yeah, at the lookout. Shit. Yeah. So there you go. Before <laughs> airbag or. <laughs> I wish we never yeah. got to that level. Um, <laughs> yeah, was that the guy was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, I saw playing that. live at the Foundry. <laughs> you know what's fucked up about that is like I was rehearsing at this place in Osborne Park. Um, I can't remember what it was called. It wasn't Soundworks. It was the other one, and they rehearsed there. Think, their bag. Yeah, right. And that dude spiked his hair for rehearsals. Fuck yeah, that's Liber- commitment. Like you Liber- see all the punk guys who rock the like Liberty spikes and all that. You got to be down. Like if you're gonna rock it, rock it 100. percent Imagine how stupid you'd look when it's down, though. Yeah, so exactly. Like, like, oh yeah, play an airbag. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> yeah, but the guy with the spiky hair does. <laughs> <laughs> no one would believe you. No. Imagine doing your fucking accountant job. And so you're 100. percent He had to be an accountant, right? He's just doing his fucking work, and he's like working whoa, for the weekend. <laughs> they singing a song for oh. the broken. I just remember they had that one. Do you remember that, that Bon Jovi song? And it had like the, um, it had that weird mouth synth thing. That whoa, whoa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, um, oh, I forgot and Foo Fighters had it as well. Oh, yeah. Or, 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 yeah. Or, or, yeah. They're the only two songs I think that have ever used that. In a, and that band, yeah, Air, Airbag like, literally fishful. had that. Like they, they had that instrument that <laughs> they'd made just to cover two songs. Do you reckon they had a discussion before they went and bought one and was like, we need this? And everyone's like, dude, we don't need it. We definitely don't <laughs> need, definitely it. need it. He also had like a um, walking stick, like um, mic stand. Right. What? Like a customized walking stick mic stand. I used to go to look at a lot. Yeah. Was, that was a small like, You know, and, and industrial fans. They would like blow the guitarist's hair back and shit. They were com- they were committed. <laughs> we grew up in the, the era of cover bands being at everything. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like for a, that before whole a DJ. True. pub rock kind of scene. Yeah, you know, Felix, to... the girls. Oh they used yeah. To play at like fucking bar one twenty. No, nah, well, I was thinking in Frio. It wasn't Newport. That's at one end. Clink. No, nah, it's past the clink on the corner. Oh, the clink. No, Salem Anchor in Newport. I, I don't know. Uh, it's it's all the uh, same down Felix. there. Felix. Right? Uh, Man, I've got a good Felix story. Which I'll tell you. They were kind of celebrities, really, when you think about it. They were kind of fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Damasi, the girl that's on the news, I believe, played in Felix or was uh, the singer in Felix. Well, there was two twin sisters, or right. sisters at least. Were they the Veronica's? Spike my interest as a 17-year-old. <laughs> I've seen that this That was my before. favourite category on Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they were called sisters then, though. That only came in in, like, 2020. Yeah. 
Nah, it was, um, I was, I was at Bar 120 and they were playing and I used to roll around with some ruffians and, um, you ever, you know, when you were younger, you'd go to, you go, I'd go to places like that and I didn't want to be there. No, it was like every time I went out, I didn't want to go Yeah, until I clubs. found the amplifier bar. Yeah, that's exactly it. Like I was just going around. So I think I was like probably 18. We were going out from when we were like 16. Yeah, yeah. Because you could just pretty much change your fucking, <laughs> change the date you of birth on your like concession your card. And, yeah. Like, yeah. and it, was, it was sweet. So um, yeah, we, we hit that place up. And you could feel there was like tension in the air. Some of my, because my friends used to get in fights all the time. It was a thing to so do back then. So you'd go to like, you'd go to a venue, and you'd see someone kind of like their ears prick up and like look over, and you're like, oh, well, obviously they've got beef with someone that I know over something that's happened somewhere yeah, else. Yeah. And you get the adrenaline spike of like, oh, there's about to be something, and you're on the dance floor. And fucking Felix are there playing like Green Day. <laughs> the soundtrack to a yeah, fight. Yeah, and everything slows down and you get laser focused. And then it didn't kick off. And I was like, I was watching their, them assemble their troops. You're trying to figure out how many people are there. You're kind of trying to let your friends know without like drawing too much attention to it. Because you're like, hey, something's about to it's fucking pop off, off here. Yeah. You can see them coming through the crowd. It's like a fucking Michael Bay film. And then it didn't kick off. So my adrenaline dumped, ripped off, down to like nothing. And you know, when your adrenaline fucking falls yeah, yeah, like, like when it dumps, you could fall asleep. And I'm like, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> like, and then this dude just came running through, and was just like, <laughs> you waited for the adrenaline to <laughs> and wear I was off. Just like, oh no! <laughs> but we all ended up in this just full melee, and I was on the stage, and what's the name? We're playing like Felix. Were, we're playing and I'm like on the stage and some dude's like wrestling with me. The whole crowd has just turned into a proper ballet Mary. brawl. Yeah. They've stopped playing. The whole place has been cleared out. I just love that some guy like red sun Sue. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wait for them to think we're going to attack. <laughs> then they're going to fall asleep. That's the it. Ultimate. I never knew what that was over. That was such a regular occurrence when I was, when it I was, was the at same that age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It and then just... I was just like, oh, this is just what life is like. And I remember I went to university and I went out one night with this, this guy, Ewan, that I'd never been out with before. He was just a, a friend that I made at uni. And he's like, oh, come to Northbridge this Saturday. Me and my friends are going out. And we had the most nondescript night ever. I just went to like a shitty bar on the corner, like in the center of Northbridge. I know the one, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Some, like a, some Irish pub. Yeah, sort of yeah, yeah, they used to do jugs. It's, yeah, it's still there. Yeah, I don't yeah know it's, it's got called. a different name now. Yeah, um, it's like next yeah. to air. It was yeah, under, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, we just sat around talking shit, laughing, got drunk, joked around, and then I, I got dropped home. And I was like, no one got in a fight, no one like cried or fucking fingered someone's <laughs> girlfriend. There was nothing but like... The shit that I, I, it just occurred to me that I was like, wow, I, my group and the people that I hang out with is just so fucking yes. wild. And I just didn't realize that there was like, that you could go out and not have any drama. Which is kind of weird if you think you went out to an Irish pub with an Irish guy, a guy with an Irish name. Oh, anyway. a Scottish guy. Oh, and in an did, Irish pub. And no one got headbutted. Yep. And I was like, oh my God, there is. And so I just bounced. I just ditched everyone <laughs> I knew and Joodle up. And I left and Joodle up. I was like, I can't. This shit is terrible. This. And a lot of them never left. And yeah. some of them write in capital letters on Facebook. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. I know the type. I think it's a side <laughs> effect of meth. A few addictions going <laughs> I around. I think there's a few addictions. <laughs> one of them's dead and he did some jail time. So I think I made the right decision. Yeah, I'd say that's safe. Then again, I do have a... I'm 41 and I have a podcast and I've just quit vaping. So yeah, but you've quit <laughs> Life's vaping. Life's not going great. <laughs> you quit vaping. You haven't gone down the rabbit hole to meth. This is true. Yeah. Well, vaping is a gateway drug to the glass barbecue, I've heard. So maybe I've heard that. narrowly escaped it. <clears throat> like Barely major. got out. But yeah, you're doing that fucking band thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. What's your band called, Tom? The Chain. The Chain. The Chain. Uh, yeah. Or did you just describe a chain for me? Oh, you've got a tattoo yeah. on your leg. Okay. <laughs> yes, no. I was like, I no, know what a chain legs. is, bro. I've seen one. <laughs> it's so At funny. Least so you're such a nice, I know you as such a nice, well, like mild-mannered person. And then 
in that band. You're so like it's such tough guy. Yeah, it's, it's all it's it's for show. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. But tough that's guy. the coolest thing about it because yeah, you understand you were in the hardcore scene. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's like you understand that the majority of those dudes are fucking lovely. That's exactly like I, I will say that to everybody. Like I remember younger, you know, my parents would be like, "Oh, you know, they've all got tattoos. They're all drop kicks, whatever." I'm like, "These are the nicest, most." well-adjusted people you will ever meet and it's only in like the past uh, probably 10 years that they're finally like oh okay like if you're covered in tattoos it doesn't mean that you've like gone to japan and gone gone to jail (laughs) 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 you know what i mean you don't turn on me (laughs) we're picking on scott (laughs) (laughs) Uh, you know what i mean it's like yeah you can't judge a book by who do you think turned it around adam levine david beckham maybe who do you think it was where tattoos finally to mum and dad became like oh okay maybe he's yeah i don't know it could have been david beckham it might have been because he was he went full he started early everything early with the mohawks as well yeah that's true pretty rebellious yeah, that. And that was fine. Like, the, the, we needed a really good looking person that was very good at their craft. Yes. Yeah, to champion. To really the champion. Chorus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what? Forward. Before that, we had Angry Anderson. Yeah, for real. <laughs> it was just like bikies. Yeah, it's exactly it. It's, just, it's crazy how it's gone like full circle now. Yeah, who, what did we have before that? Was because that was Alice. I don't even think that rock stars really had tattoos back in the day. No, they didn't have like one there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, like a tribal. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the full a, tribal a Celtic like, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Robbie or the Williams. Band. Yeah, Robbie Williams. Yeah, he was he was a bad boy. Yeah, a philandra. Is that the word? Where no, was, is that money? What's the one where you have sex with women? All the money. Uh, <laughs> that's a. That is a philandra. Yeah. No, it's not you're philander. Thinking, no, it's, you're like loose with the money. No, you're thinking of a philanthropist. No, I'm thinking of a philanderer. No, a philanderer a is someone that goes around slaying and dick. Loose sure. with the penis. I believe so. <laughs> loose with the penis. <laughs> yeah. Pushing peas over here. Yeah. <laughs> well, Robbie Williams pushed some peas, man. man He's a Robbie short Williams man is too. DJ. Did you watch these? Did, I watched his dog. Oh, nah. the best is why. Um, is this thing Liam Gallagher? Like, like, oh. like challenge him to a fight. Yeah. What, yeah. Recently. Nah, nah back in the day. Back yeah. in the day. Oh, was... yes, you're an Oasis fan. I'm oh, not... man. Dude, we've never spoken about Dude, this. Liam Gallagher is like the pinnacle man for me mm-hmm. because he simply doesn't give a shit. Like, it's like you can insult him to his face and he'll just flip it on you and you'll like walk away feeling so stupid. <laughs> like, I go on YouTube all the time and just watch Liam Gallagher. The interviews. best of Liam Gallagher. Dude, I do exactly the same. Oh, man. I was such a huge away because I was born in Manchester. No, no way. Yeah, there you go. So I, but I was pulled, pulled yeah, from the yeah, soil straight out here. of here. So I, they were like my band. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. I saw them play at the entertainment center. I saw but, him at, um, they played Rocket. Remember Rocket? Yeah, I, was, yeah. I saw that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Oasis play Rocket. Yeah, with the Foo really? Fighters. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, man. That was Oasis with a the shit. They were, the crazy thing is you would have seen like there and then, like the doco and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Them playing Nebworth like three Insane. nights in a row. They reckon that there was some, it was something like 5% of the English population were at that show. I believe like, that. Over That's the, crazy. Period. Like, they were flown in on the helicopter. Yeah. There was like... It's insane the number of people that were at those shows. Like, and they reckon they could have sold it out 10 nights in a row. Oh, uh, yeah. It was like, absolutely nuts. When you think of a band that kind of encapsulates that whole British sound, <clears throat> you dare say it's that. Mm-hmm. Well, that was the first time that, like, because back then stuff was being pushed. Like, you had to get on a major label yeah. and be pushed. So yeah. it was like Britpop. Get it was like creation. Blur and Oasis yeah, yeah. and The Verve and yeah. things like that. But they were literally council estate kids. That's exactly it. No one, like the idea of them ever being rich and famous was just completely impossible. And they were proper scumbags. Yeah, exactly. Liam was. Noel was just a hippie. He was kind of along for the ride. Yeah, he played, he was a, he was a roadie for this band called the Inspiral Carpets. Yeah, okay. And uh, they were just like a full on like proper hippie rock band. Yeah, right. <clears throat> and then Type. Liam joined a band called The Rain. And the, the singer from The Rain had a, had a book that I read called Don't Look Back in Anger. Yeah, okay. And it was him, Bonehead, and um, Gwigsy? Yeah, Gwigsy, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were out playing in Manchester. 
during this was like they were they were like a rock band, but they, this was during the um, like Manchester days. Which yeah, was like yeah. The happy Mondays, and Happy Mondays, yeah, yeah. And the raves and stuff. And um, yeah, he he linked up with them, and they and was like, "Yeah, you got to get rid of your fucking singer. I'll sing for you." I think he saw him play, and they were like, "Okay, Liam," because Liam, yeah, he's a like Commander, yeah. And then uh, Noel came back from tour with the carpets and was like, "I've got some songs written," and they just went, "Yeah, we're the biggest we're, band yeah, in the fucking oh, world." Man, insane, like like they already had to live forever. Yeah, yeah, like that whole three years. But they were, it was at uh, Definitely Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was just like biggest album in the world. It like, still <clears> stands up. Yeah. Like, like they still probably wrote the most iconic exactly. songs the Beatles for me. You know, even though it's the biggest tragedy that we'll probably never see them to play songs together again and that band never continued, I hope that we never do. Mm. Yeah. I think it's a, a thing of beauty. <clears throat> no. And the, the cool thing is as well, like there's two people in this world that I think have navigated through it and maintained the aura that they always had. Yeah. And for me, that's Liam Gallagher and Roy Keane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Roy Keane is still Roy Keane. He's a, yeah. He used to play for United. He's on the TV as a pundit. They, they, they based fucking Roy Kent on that. Did you watch um, that, what was this, soccer with the American, the American... Oh, the, the, the oh, uh, Ted, Lasso. Um, Ted Lasso. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a guy on that called Roy Kent, and it's completely yeah. Roy Keane. Um, but they've managed to navigate the whole thing where Liam is still cool. He's still fun, him. But he's, <clears throat> he's so unlikely that he is what he is now. Like, he's fit. Yeah, he's, he should be like... And he's is... well-spoken, and he's, like, wise, but he's still... A chavy geezer. Yeah, he's still yeah. got that thing about him. Have you seen that, that video of him? He's like, go down the pub for one beer. I was just thinking that. Yeah, he's like, we're not going down for one. We're going down for hundreds. I'm not going to walk down there. Oh, yeah, my dog died. Oh, yeah, that's sorry, mate. All right, well, I'm off. <laughs> we're going down for hundreds. hundreds. <laughs> and his fucking hairline is, is like Dude, an no, edge from his eyebrows. It's like you abused <laughs> yourself to the... It's insane what you but want to like put your body through. But it's like all those rock stars you as well. Look fully young. It's so fucking weird. The Rolling Stones, yeah, sure they got wrinkles and stuff now, but it's like they're still dancing around mm. and doing all that. I'm like, how? Mm. How drugs? The drugs. <laughs> you know, I, I, was, I was talking. I oh, sorry, you go. Oh no, I was just going to say I went and saw him um, when yeah, he, he was here to go with you, and I didn't go. Yeah, I, can't, I was in. I was on some downer. I should have definitely gone. First there was time a part of me baby. that didn't want to see. <laughs> there was a part of me that didn't want to see. Liam Gallagher. I just felt like it was probably the last time I was ever going to have the opportunity to see those songs played live by at least one of them. So I was yeah. like, fuck it, let's go. Because oh, yeah, he played last year, right? It was a few but years ago it was now. Before COVID, like yeah. 20, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, before COVID. Jeez. 2019. Wild, yeah. You know, I was talking, I, I was hanging out with Yoni yesterday and um, we were talking about this idea of like, having heroes and seeing them. Because my, my theory is that there's going to be a pedophile. Hmm. So I've like someone Island. that we loved. Right. Because with, cause there's been like, um, you know, the English guy. Yeah, the um, Savile. Yeah, yeah, there's been oh, Savile yeah. and there's been like Michael What's... Jackson and stuff. But it was all before our time. We, we were like, oh, yeah, we understood that Michael Jackson was famous. But I think from the whole time Michael Jackson was famous and I was aware of him, I was like, he also fucks kids, right? Yeah. Like, and with Savile, I never knew who fucking Jimmy Savile was until he was yeah, famous. Like, we had Rolf well. Harris, but that was still pretty early. Yeah, but it, again, it was just like, I couldn't tell you what Rolf Harris did. Yeah. Okay. He had a did he do board. timey kangaroo down sport? Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. he did. Yeah. Yeah, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, the wobble board was the famous Yeah, bit. the wobble board. Yeah. Maybe be one I, of the I, dudes, yeah. So there's going to be someone like that we revered. One of the dudes from Cheese TV. <laughs> yeah, like, for real. It would be something like that. Maybe Jade. It's aggro. <laughs> no, he's actually come out that he was like... Aggro was a yeah, nasty little yeah. cunt. Yeah, but you oh, were, but yeah, wasn't that's the thing. Sad. You're like, yeah, of course he was. Of course he was. He's under a table. And he was getting there? fucking molested. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he wasn't far off. Have you out, seen the it? videos of yeah. Aggro? He like pinches her off. Dude, he's like, a, it's an old dude that does the thing. And he was, he had the worst mouth. And he was sexually assaulting Anne-Marie <laughs> at all times, verbally. 
most of the time. But yeah, he was a filthy little pig. Yeah, he was under the table. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that yeah. was the character, right? I mean, yeah, little... he was just <clears throat> method acting. <laughs> yeah, it was way worse. <laughs> but yeah, there's going to be like, there'll be someone, I'm, I'm trying to think, like Noel Gallagher. And you would just be like, yeah, he would come out as like a prolific. If Steve and Irwin like, hadn't no. been stingrayed. Yeah, well, this is the thing. If you, you die a hero or you live long enough to see... To be become a pedophile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The bitch. <laughs> but the, the one that's crazy is Kurt Cobain. Oh, so yeah, I saw that all come up. Yeah. He's, the, he's the perfect example of someone that burns out right at the peak. and 27 Club. Yeah, and bounced. So he is forever enshrined in this era of being like, this amazing, perfect musician. Yeah. We kind of have it with John Lennon to a degree, but people just discount the fact that John Lennon sucks so bad. Yeah. In the last like 10 years before he that. died. He's just like music output was horrendous. But when you go and look at Kurt Cobain, so I looked it up on Google. Bleach came out in 1989. Is that 89? 89. That was their first album. Yeah. Uh, came out on Sub Pop. Yeah. They then blow up. They then do Nevermind. Yeah, because some of their first shows were in Australia. Yep. Well, like before. Which like, kicked off the big day out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. Like, so they did Nev- yeah. They did Nevermind, which is one of the most influential albums yeah. ever. Then In Utero. Then they do Live in New York. Or oh, they did Incesticide, which I think was a B-Sides album yeah, for the most part. Album. He died in 1994 in April. Jeez. So the entirety of us knowing who Kurt Cobain is is a five-year period, which is almost now back to just before COVID. Yeah. That's, that's the period of time that he existed for in the, in the public eye, which is fucking insane. Mm. But it's the same with, like, all those, like, legacy bands, you know, <clears throat> especially within, like, punk and hardcore. They released maybe two albums in a four-year period, and they're just revered. Mm-hmm. Which is insane. But if you die, you're fully revered. I oh, don't yes. think, like, <laughs> we never got a chance That's to see Kurt trick. Cobain. We, you, we, never, we never got a chance to see Kurt Cobain, like, be a spokesman for Pfizer. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, you know, uh, like, uh, uh. fucking be a Trump supporter. Yeah. Or yeah, Subway yeah. commercials. Yeah, or play the Super Bowl while 50 Cent's hanging upside down. Yeah. Like, we didn't get a chance to see him become old and lame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. just, he died a hero, essentially. And that's the only thing that you really, I think you look at life and you go, you, you think about like legacy and stuff like that. You can only really have legacy for, some, for one thing that you did. And in the modern landscape, if you tarnish that thing that you did, you're probably more going to be remembered for the tarnishing of it. Yeah, that's exactly, yeah, yeah. Like no Michael one remembers Jordan. the stuff you did before. They just remember all the shit you did wrong. Exactly. And even like Michael Jordan for everything that he did, Apparently, he's more well known now for being a fucking the crying meme. Like yeah, you ask people, yeah, they're like, "Who's yeah. that?" They're like, "That's the crying that's meme the crying guy." Meme guy. <laughs> yeah, it's just children are retards. No, it's like that. Yeah, but there's generation. more of them than there is of us. Yeah. Well, look, if there's any takeaways from this podcast episode, is that Scott believes you should kill yourself yeah. before you become lame. If you want to be remembered, <laughs> kill, yourself kill yourself now. Yeah, live fast, die young. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. It so kind of makes sense. <laughs> It is funny, though, because I think that that like the rock and roll thing or at least the live music performance thing, like you get it now where you're like, it's performative. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. go in there and be, I be can kind of put person. on this mask yeah. and be it. And everyone knows that that's what we're doing and it's fun. Yeah. And I understand that it's fun. When you're younger, you're like, this is... This is my identity. This is forever. This yeah, is, yeah, yeah. This is hard, yeah, especially with hardcore. Like I, I was never in hardcore. Band, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, this is this is family and this is fucking, yeah. and I'm like, I'm never going to drink and I'm going to X up my hand yeah, and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, you have so much life to live. Exactly. <laughs> it's such some bold statements <laughs> as a 19 year old. And to be able to do it, I think as, especially in hardcore, to be able to do it as a hobby where it's like, this is going to be fully fun and entertaining. I'm going to get to travel with my mates. I'm yeah. Yeah. Playing music. <clears throat> I get to have this side quest. Yeah. From life. Yes. I but can. also be established as what you are. Yeah. For people that don't know, you're a really, really fucking fantastic designer. Thank you. And I don't think many people are. No, I appreciate <laughs> so that. No, I, I know you'd be straight up with me if you thought it sucked. No, you're fucking solid. So it's like to already have that vehicle and then go, I'm doing this as well because yep. this is a 
I need to, you, you do it because that's you need exactly to, it. Like, like you this need is that a part of me that needs to do it. Especially this. like as you grow on, you'd probably have the same thing with your music. It's like <clears throat> you do it day in day out. Sometimes it becomes a chore, and you need that other release. Mm-hmm. Like for me, I'm like cool. I sing vocals in a very aggressive band. If I'm having a shit day, I'm going to bottle that up. Like for that, not not like a mental health bad way, but as in like a, I'm going to use that for that. I have an outlet. For yeah, this. exactly. Yep. I yeah. miss that. There is a, such a freedom in – because I used to, you know, with Hope, you saw Hope, you go yeah, like yeah. A, singing and like shouting and screaming. It's cathartic. Stuff. Dude, it's the, – the freedom – most people will never get to experience that level of just complete release yep. where you're just like on stage throwing yourself around. Everyone's – like the music's Jumped heavy. Into it, yeah. The, the crowd's fucking it's, – it's sweaty – the crowd's jumping and you're just fucking like primarily letting out yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever it's it is. Like, I, mean, I didn't even have any issues, but I was, there was some primal part of me that was just like, it was very freeing and it was very yeah. exhausting to do. And that, it, that was like a really beautiful thing that I look, I think a lot, a lot of people that were in bands that aren't in bands anymore are like, Oh yeah. That was I missed like, out. Like, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I'm like, man, I fucking, I really appreciate that, that that I had that. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, like you say, no, not many people get to experience that. I don't think, especially in like hardcore, especially that's why you have so many people up front going nuts. That's why people are moshing so hard. It's like, cool. You come there, you come to that room, you get it all out, and you go home fully. And then you're good. Like, and next show, next weekend, do it all again. Says, so yeah, yeah. How often are you playing? Uh, well, we've we've been playing the same like material for a while. So we've kind of put a halt on rec- uh, playing shows till we record some new stuff. Um, but we're playing like <clears throat> probably once every three weeks, once a month. <clears throat> like for a while there, we're playing like every weekend. Are you sorry um, much? Yeah, we did Southeast Asia last year. That was cool. Um, hopefully got something lined up mid-year. as like when we release this as well. Um, like we just do little weekenders. Like the rest of the guys in my band are like, they're not, they're not as old as me or Jake, you know, Jake, Yep. Jake's um, about my age. So we've all just got life commitment. So it's, we're not doing this to make a ton of money and like be on a major label or anything like that. It's just fun. So if we can use it as a vehicle to go over East, see some mates, have a weekend, we're going to do that. We have a new sponsor, uh, Le Bon Cookies. Did I swear? You can probably swear in the ad read. <laughs> if you like New York style cookies, which are crispy on the outside and half-baked dough on the inside, then get around Le Bomb Cookies, who are a new podcast sponsor. They've got stores in Cottesloe and Frio. For the guys, I, I'm so terrible at these. This is fucking insane. <laughs> if you're looking for a good gift to buy for your girlfriend or wife, I think they love cookies. They do love cookies. Go- <laughs> um, if you're an unthoughtful boyfriend and you've forgotten to get your girlfriend a gift, Jesus, fuck. girls like cookies and murdered TV shows and those things go together perfectly. So if you're looking for a gift, buy them some Le Bomb cookies. You can get them delivered to your house, even if you don't live in WA, or you can go in store and grab them. The packaging's great, the branding's great, the cookies are great, it's all good. All of this is good. <laughs> Every part of what they do is good. <laughs> I recently quit nicotine and I am now going to just gouge myself on New York style cookies. Gouge or gorge? <laughs> Visit them at Le Bomb Cookies on Instagram. That's L A B O M B Cookies. Le Bomb Cookies are good. I love it. Uh, I think I've got enough. Do you have a fat pig girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever found yourself in a position where there is something extremely heavy to pick up and you do not have the physical attributes to be able to manage it? I have. I know Scott has. And if you find yourself in a similar predicament, you should reach out to Jackson Moore at Perth Fork Trucks. These boys have been servicing the Perth Fork Trucking industry for over a decade? Maybe more. I don't know. It's been a long time. We don't have that information. They are experts, though. You can guarantee that. Go to perthforktrucks.com.au. The link is going to be down in the description below. Or reach out to Jackson Moore. The funniest thing with the music thing was for me, because I started doing it so young and it really picked up steam. Like, Hope You Gone got pretty big in the sense where we got, you know, we were played on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we did a Was it pre carnival, right? It was, 
so our drummer Steve, we, it, we, he was in our band, and then Carnival released their first album. Oh no! And they came, they came to watch See it play, you. and we were like, "Man, the fuck Carnival!" Because we used to go and watch them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're like, they're here, like the GBT on a Monday night, watching us fucking play yeah, some right. open mic, essentially. And we were like, "This is sick," because it was a little bit of a buzz, you know. We were yeah, starting yeah, to get yeah. supports and stuff. And um and we were just from Joondal up, so we didn't have yeah. any concept. We weren't a part of any scene. No, nah, that's like exactly. Getting booked on it was so different back then, anyway. Fully, but it was so it was, it was super exciting. And then they um, yeah, we see him chatting to Steve in the corner. Oh no, because he was Judas man. He was he was so good. He still is. He's just one yeah, of the yeah, best yeah. drummers I've ever seen in my life. And um, yeah, they. Next thing we know, he's in Carnival. We're touring with Carnival. He's like playing with both of us. And then we had our other mate, Jay, who was amazing. It was in a Laura Dannon. Oh, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he played drums for us as well. Yeah. And we ran that for a, a while. And then I remember getting, we, we played this festival at, um, in Sydney at, at that fucking Luna Park. Yeah, right. And it was like a big festival. It's pretty cool. And I remember getting on stage there. And just realizing that it's like, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Like, we'd okay. like worked so hard at, at doing it. And then we'd gone on that tour and I was like, I don't like the fucking, like me and the bass player weren't friends. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. That's hard. Like when you're touring with people you don't like. It's trying to maintain four relationships. That's exactly it. Me and it. Steve were really close. Me and Croy were, were close, but we, were, we had a pretty fucking like love hate relationship in a lot of ways. Yeah. And I was just like, man, I don't need to do this anymore. And yeah, it, it happened yeah. when I was on stage and I was singing and I was like, I don't kind of done. Yeah. And I also felt like we, the stuff we were doing was fun and cool and made sense. But that time had passed and it was almost like we, we got to a point doing that and I didn't really want to do that anymore. Yeah, I was more into yeah. other kind of music and stuff. Yeah. So it was very much one of those things where I was like, I'm kind of okay with this being done and I don't have any regrets with it. Yep. Um, and just then Steve just went on being doing his thing. He played in the Veronicas for years. Yeah, right. There's he, your twins again. Yeah, he drummed. Yeah, I know. He got to live all my fantasies. Um, and then he, yeah, he drummed for like Ice House on their tour. He's like a wow. session drummer. Yeah, cool. Yeah. It's I always cool. love hearing guys that like do well in that industry because he's just so cutthroat. <clears throat> oh, he had to do well because he couldn't do anything else. Oh, he was like go. so good at drums, and you're like, "Yeah, you better fucking do what do you it. can," yeah. like because there's no. He was like, "I don't have any other skills." Yeah, that's sick. Because he went all in. Good on him. Yeah, it's fucking no, it's, sick. So yeah. you kind of have to to get that good at something, though, right? You kind of pretty to much yeah. unless you're a fucking freak. I think we. He, he was one of those dudes that was insanely talented. Yeah, from the jump, and then it was like you're going to get discovered and you're going to get utilized. Mm, and exactly. like he's sponsored and it, yeah, like, right. but I mean, they're, they're, they're still a big cult band. Yeah. 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 Um, they never changed their name. But isn't that's like Travis Barker. That's why he got all those tattoos. Mm. Cause he was like, well, from covered in tattoos, I'm not going to get a job. So exactly. I have to do this now. And then now you just can get a job covered in tattoos. Yeah. It's like yeah, yeah. Yeah. Prerequisite. Yeah, if you like, want to make cult. Damn band. it. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have to go through all this pain. <laughs> you designed for um, yeah. Travis Barker. Yeah, for Famous. Did that go south? No, uh, it was weird, man. So it was like, he hit me up on Instagram and I was like, I was like, I had to go to, well, I didn't have to, I went to India for a wedding, a mate's wedding. And I came back and I'm on the bed and I saw this DM from him and I'm like, he's like, hey man, you're a genius. Love all your artwork. <clears throat> I'm like, yeah, okay, burner account. I was like, thanks man, appreciate it. Um, and then he hits me back. He's like, I'd love for you to do some work for me. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, here's my email address. And then he emails me and I'm like, oh, okay. So it's actually him. <laughs> kind of weird. So I did a bunch of stuff and then he kind of handed me over to the, his people. And his people just like dropped the ball. So I did all his work and then it just took ages to get paid. Um, I just did some stuff for him recently. He hit me up on like New Year's Day. He's like, yo, let's do some stuff. I'm like, yep, cool. Did I arrange for him? And I only just heard back like two days ago. So it's no, pretty yeah. sick the way that that works with like Instagram. I yeah, had that yeah. Tom, I had that with Tom Morello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just see that name pop up in your fucking and email like, and you're like, oh, 
That's fucking crazy. But it's so weird. So I'm like, I'm working at the computer one day and he's like, yo, you got time for a call? I'm like, yeah, sure. And he just FaceTimes me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm like, I took a screenshot. And I was like, finish the call, back to work. And it's fucking wild. <clears throat> it's wild when you speak to people like that and you realize they're just like- Yeah, it's normal people. The most normal yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was lovely. Like for like someone that big, like not a bad word to say about him with my interaction with him. That's like his, we just had Franco at the time, like the first time I chatted with him. Um, and he was just like talking about being a dad and doing all that. And he's like, yeah, I want to do this. And he's like, you do it? And I'm like, yeah, see, end call. It's so funny that life just keeps going. Yeah. Because you like, you have those moments where you're like, oh man, like, I don't know. Cause I never, I, I never had like aspirations to be a graphic designer. I just yeah. kind of fell into it and it was something I was like talented at. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. It kind of worked out, and I do really enjoy it. But yeah. it wasn't like I was fighting. I didn't. I never studied it. I never. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't, yeah, yeah. I wasn't like fighting to do that. So I, there wasn't like aspirations for me to become that. Yeah. But when I started doing, when I, you know, I did that Tom Morello stuff, and I did like the Labyrinth stuff, and yep. like some bigger stuff, and you're like, oh wow, there's definitely a version of me from ten years ago. Yeah. Been like <clears throat> you. You kill me. If you knew you would do that, you'd be like, "That's that's you're, exactly you're it." Yeah. And then you're just like, "I gotta pay my fucking mortgage." It's like, you're yeah, just gonna be, yeah. Like, like, it's you're just, just like there's right no back to reality. Yeah, there's yeah. no destination of like success. You're no, like, oh, that's yeah, exactly that, that might it. appear like success, but you still got to fucking you still got to continue about living your life. Normal stuff. Yeah, that's exactly it. But. No, it's, it's weird how it all works. Like, especially dealing with all those like celebrities and that kind of thing. Like everyone thinks like, oh, you're set. <clears throat> well, you're working for celebrities or like, you're on your way. And it's like, no. Nah. You're like, yeah, they don't pay fuck all. No, nah, <laughs> if they pay at all. <laughs> they don't pay well at all. It's like, no, nah, cool. I'm still going to wake up tomorrow and have to do the same shit I do day in, day out. Mm, like, yep. I saw you post uh, some designs that you did for him that they didn't take. And but, oh, that was me like being an asshole essentially because I never heard back. Oh, cool. Well, that, that was kind of going to be my question is like, do like what's what's the go there? Because I thought like looking at it, you're, it's kind of like, oh, right, here's the ones that these that I really like. So yeah, these yeah, douche, yeah. That's the um, that's the subtext to it. It's like yeah. these were sick. These douchebags didn't like it. That's is pretty that much something, what I was going for. Is that like, something that you? are okay with doing for anything or is yeah. it in that particular circumstance? No, it's for anything. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because they're yours, well, I mean, right? That's so exactly it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like if you want to buy it still, yeah. you've File got names. my account. Yeah, yeah. it's like the great... I've got the files. Yeah. They never pick the be- it, They rarely pick the best stuff. Like the graveyard <laughs> of, of concepts. Me and Ben were talking about this in here the other day about like starting some sort of like graveyard yeah. Instagram because I've just... Which is there's for every design that you see out in the world, there's four others that didn't make it for the same project, and there's nowhere for them to go. Occasionally, you can repurpose people it. People think they're like, "Have you got a new line around? You can just like change." Oh, the name. I like, hate that question. Yeah, you don't understand the way this shit works. Oh. It's like about balancing it and all, all making sense, tailoring it to what your needs are. Yeah, yeah. And it's like so. Occasionally, I get to refer back to something yeah. and, and utilize the same style. But I did it the other day because I had to do a branding job and I was a little bit behind the ball on it. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. I the stuff that I did for these guys. And it was a similar word and it never got used. It was like they used a complete yeah, yeah, concept yeah. altogether. So I just had to do some quick changes and it was actually the best concept for the first client. Yeah, perfect. But so this client was just like, well, this is fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, cool. Now it lives. But little that's rare. You know. But while I was looking back through the hard drive, I was like, God damn, like, there is so much shit. Like the new Cobb Good shirt was something that I'd done for another, I think it was for like Extra Large, that Japanese. Yeah, yeah, I did some stuff for them as well. Yeah, they, they fucked those guys. So did you have to like fill out the form and then send it to them? Yeah, but then I didn't do it because yeah. I was busy. <laughs> yeah. So I'd given them the print files and everything and they were like, that's great. And then you had to register for like Japanese fucking tax yeah, yeah. or something. So I hit up my account and was like, what do I need to do here? And he goes, this seems weird. And I was like, all right, I was busy doing other stuff. And then two months later, I was like, oh yeah, shit. Um, here, I, f- I think I've done this right. And they go, we didn't use any of your designs because you didn't finalize the payment, the tax document. And I was like, you, thanks. You had them. And then I was like, well, 
the work's done. Like, you still got to fucking paint. Yeah, it's exactly. You still got the files. And they were real rude to me about it. And I was just like, yeah, fuck you. That's weird, yeah. So fuck extra large. <laughs> <laughs> Streetwear is weird like that. Just, got Streetwear such, is so fickle, dude. Oh, dude, I've got such a love-hate relationship with it. It's just, yeah, I don't know. So the other thing is that I did, so I ran all of the design and creative for Street X for the first five, five and a half, six years. Yeah, I think. yeah. And then I decided to leave, mainly because... Daniel. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Don't nah, sugarcoat it. Was good. It, was, it was awesome, like, growing that label with him. Yeah, yeah. And then I think he required that because I had a lot of knowledge in, like, production and design and basically the whole way it worked. He's clueless. And then he, but he really knew how to, like, market and he knew what he wanted to do. Yeah. And I'd set up, I'd done like branding and labels. I'd done the same thing for like four or five people previous and they'd gone on and been successful in different yeah, ways. Yeah. But the majority of them, he had that where he was like, I'm going to see this through. Yep. And I think I got to about 32 and we were going to America and stuff. And I was like, I'm no longer personally relevant in this at all yeah like we go to these streetwear parties and it was like a lot of people standing around being like cool guys too cool yeah yeah and i didn't like it and i was like oh i'm trying now i need to just kind of be performative in the way that i approach these things and then i felt like the design stuff that i was doing really made sense to me and that was the there was this beautiful cohesion with like the stuff we were putting out and then it was like I had to like put, it was similar with the club stuff where it was like, I'm no longer making stuff for me. Yeah. Other people are enjoying it. I need to look at the, the crowd and the market that are into this and try and design for them. Exactly. And I was like, eh, I don't, I don't, don't want to do, do this anymore. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to start holding this back by being like critical of the things that that market wants. Yep. So I was like, I feel like I've done enough in this space and it was really cool like the way and i was the music stuff was taking off as well yeah yeah yeah. and i was like yeah i'm gonna Mm. i think i'm gonna bounce and then you would we'd done some work with you because you were rusty yeah and then when i found out it wasn't for a while no no so i was kind of like doing a bit of freelance stuff while i was still at rusty and then rusty made me redundant thank you which is what they tend to do oh to fucking yeah everyone fuck that place i got not yeah I heard story, horror stories. I knew so many people that had worked for Rusty. Yeah. And they would like, there was these horror stories of people that had worked there for like 11 years and then they'd rock up one day and they'd be locked out of the building and they'd be like, you're not allowed at your computers. Like everyone's redundant. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I was like, holy shit. Is that they used to the- do redundancies like once a year. That's crazy. And it was just like, you went up first, you're like, oh no, I hope it's not me. And by the end, I'm like, come on, yeah. it's my time. Give it up. And then, yeah, when I got my letter, I like, walked in. I remember it very well because I went to work. First day back after like holiday break, Christmas time, <clears throat> turned on my computer and I literally sat there going, I can't do this. Like, I, cannot, I cannot do this anymore. Turn on my email like two hours later, there's going to be restructuring you're needed for a, a meeting. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Had the meeting. CEO was very <laughs> gracious. To, to call us into a, a VC call and let us all go from the slopes of Paris or the slopes of somewhere in France, which is very gracious of him. That's so Appreciate nice. Appreciate that. That's so fucking funny, man. In those big, those big corporate structures, just how you're just a, you, you're just like there one second. Yeah. The it's, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Like, I, I'm very appreciative for that VC call because it was like, cool, done. There's that chapter. I'm on to the next thing now. Exactly. And I think what you've, it was just so good that you went on because I, I was really worried about that with Street X because I didn't want to upset the fucking, the flow of it. And yeah, seeing yeah. now, like seeing where it's gone from where it yeah. was when I was there is like, it, it, it's just gone. I think up it's and up like and up. The, the difference is like you and I, the interactions with the brand, Daniel. <clears throat> is we pretty much tell him what he needs. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he still gets his input. He still gets to run the show, but it's like... On a design point of view. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's, it's still like, nah, you can't do that. No, this makes more sense. This is how it works. 
Um, and he is collaborative in that sense. Yeah, he oh, definitely. Where it's like, you know, there's, I'd have ideas or he'd have ideas and they wouldn't necessarily gel. They need yeah. to pass the test of being, making sense to both of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but yeah, it's just, I was worried because like I said, like, I don't think that many people are good at design in that sense. Like I don't. It's a hard one. I see people yeah. and I'm like, oh, you know, you can, you can do it. But for, for someone to have like the level of kind of like, input and like passion that i had for it yeah I yeah was like, i don't yeah. know if you're gonna find that so when you went in i was like oh shit it's in it's actually fully in safe hands yeah yeah is, i think it was like the best outcome for it yeah and yeah you've probably been there for seven years now yourself yeah about seven years yeah. yep yep it's um yeah it's it's gone from strength to strength it's great it's, it's crazy it's, how it appears i mean i still obviously speak to dan quite regularly yeah yeah it appears to be fucking massive now it's yeah it's it's unreal it's like Post COVID, just a different beast. And he, he was like, that was his thing during COVID. He's like, yep, use this time, get everything set up, really take it to the next level. And he has, like, this is the only compliment you're getting from me, Daniel. Like, congratulations. <laughs> oh, don't worry. He doesn't listen to this. <laughs> oh, he, he will be listening. So. And it won't be in case I'm talking shit. It's just in case I mention his name at all. <laughs> so I'm going to repost that. An opportunity to go on social media again. <laughs> It's wow. crazy. We went to Fred again last week. Oh, yeah. Because this was scheduled for last week. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Were like, we're definitely not going to be okay on a Sunday to do this. Um, and I'm like, I was actually dancing. I don't like never ever before. What is dance. going on? Yeah, dude, this? I was like, there's a freedom in that that I've never yeah, experienced. Yeah. And I've been around it so much. And there was something in me recently where I was like, I never, I've always been too self-conscious to like have a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh well, that I was just like, this is great. This is a fucking I'm free of the time. shackles of like, the vape. Long man dancing, <laughs> and then I just turned next to me in this fucking pregnant Liz. Yeah, yeah, fully vibing out, and I was like, what the fuck? Like it's the first time I'd seen her since she was, you know, got the bump and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It's sick. Little it's... Ray baby in there. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> end up deaf, born deaf. <laughs> it's actually fucking perfect that those two found each other because they are both insane. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's the yeah, only word for it. Fully makes sense. Yeah, it's like, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Nah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. So we had dinner with Dan not too long ago and he's like, oh, I'm doing this to prepare. And I literally just laughed in his face. <laughs> like, you can do all the preparation that you want. That baby is not going to give a shit. Yeah. It's, it's their world. You're just living in it. So get used to it now before that you know, hard discovery. How old's Franco now? He's almost three and a half. Yeah. And then you've got another one. Yeah, Giorgio is uh, almost six months. So. so your wife is doing the naming hard. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's like you, you marry into an ethnic family. We're not married, but, you know, for the sake of the story, you unlock the naming. Mm. Like, it's like, cool, I've got all these names to go with now. Yeah, I could never call my child like Giovanni. Yeah, like, exactly. You married but, one. Exactly. It it's, opens it's up. There. It's like... Cheat code, unlock this. <laughs> it's so good though, because I'm like, I, I, I see you on Instagram and I'm like, oh yeah, they're baby Franco. And yeah. then you were describing earlier and you're like, Franco. No, but it's like, <laughs> you've got to understand, like, Nonno and Nonna, if they hear me say Franco, or even Frank, like, that's not his name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, he'd like, yeah, staunch Italian. Like, do you remember Spaghi? Yeah. Yeah, so her parents used to own, uh, run Spargy. Right. So. Proper eye ties. Yeah, 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 yeah. So full non on the back. Like. Yeah, that's not his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Gino. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, so that's been a trip. Was that planned? Were you like the first... Obviously, the, no, the it's, second, it's, the first. Were you like, we're going to have kids? It wasn't planned, but it wasn't not planned. It's like we'd always discussed it and then COVID... Like, we're not getting married anytime soon. Uh, just kind of happened. You How know. old are you? Um, 38 this year. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you were just like, we can do it. We're yeah, exactly. Secure. Like, if not now, then when? Um, yeah, it's, here we are. That's it's funny. The first, the later. first um, I, I obviously met you through when we were doing the collab with Ross. Yeah. Um, but we... When I met you then, I'd like added you on Instagram. Yeah. And me and my girlfriend at the time were like pretty big fans of you and your girlfriend's fucking Instagram. 
Yeah, oh, I used to wear the, yeah, no, yeah. To wear the same clothes. To, to clarify, oh, right. there, we didn't have one of those like joint. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, it was just. But like, they would wear the same outfits. Okay. And like pose for them, and it was like your Instagram was pretty much just that. It was fucking. Well, it was, the, the thing is like I'm a giant piece of shit. <laughs> like it's. My son, Franco, is my retribution because he is the most annoying person in the world as well. <laughs> but I used to do it. So Val would get dressed and I'd be preparing to get dressed, like pretending whatever. She'd go downstairs and I'd go downstairs dressed in the exact same clothes as her. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, one of us has to change. <laughs> and then like, I wouldn't change and she'd be stubborn as well. So we'd just go out and dress the same. And it just so like to the point where she would buy something and i go, I'm going to buy that. <laughs> And, like, she wouldn't know. She had this pair of, like, Adidas sneakers with, like, a cutout in the top. And I managed to find, like, a dead stock pair. <laughs> and like, I like I was, $900 on yeah, stock I was X. Committed. I'm like, this is going to be so good. <laughs> it was links. So I go to it. Yeah. Still do it now to a degree, but it's just not as funny because it's like, whatever. I got two kids to deal with. You're the yeah, least of my priority. A show on for Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it's, it's funny, but. Well, here's the question for you. You're a pair of fucking creative tastemakers in the room. As a Lindsay messaged me a while ago, and he's like, next time you guys do a pod, ask this. And it is, you know how you have like dad fashion, right? Yeah, yeah. New Balance, cargo shorts. I'm actually wearing a pair right now, really, of some fucking dad-esque shoes. Yeah. What's going to be the next dad fashion? So like, what is the fashions today that we seem to be wearing in popular culture it's that just, you think are going to end up being the dad fashion oh they're going to get the second round well that will be the dad f- f- like the dad shit of the future so like vans eras for example yeah it's going to be surf become. wear again i have a surf theory wear. on this yeah i have a theory on this i feel like your fashion like you will follow fashion trends as you're growing up because you want to fit in yeah and you will kind of move with the times so when you go to a really normy place like the garden and you see people, and you, you know, the places that I'm talking about. Like Absolutely. The, yeah, yeah. Um, you walk down the road, there's plenty of them. Yeah, there's yeah. plenty of them. And people will stop going out because they get hitched or they have kids or they start taking their careers seriously or whatever, say around like 27. And then you'll see them come out again at like 32, 33. And they'll be coming out for like an engagement party yeah. or someone's birthday or a box party or something. And that's the only reason that they're going to be out. And they'll go to places like the garden. Yeah. You can tell the moment that they stop going out. Yeah, because it's almost because like that's that's their fashion wear. sense. It's frozen. It's frozen yes. in time. In that time. I agree with you 100%. Like it, you put a full stop on it and then that's what I wear forever. But there seems to be an evolution post that. Take my dad, for example. For some reason, he thinks that wearing like those slip-on kind of trainers that you get at fucking Kmart and some cargo shorts and a pink polo shirt is like the thing to wear these days. But he never really wore that growing up. It's like the fashion has shifted slightly to become full dad. Yeah, we spoke about this when I was in London. I think that there is a, there is a point in time where you go, you know, you said, you're like, I'm a fucking dad now. I've got two kids. Yeah. There's a point in time where there's, there's a fork in the road. And what it is, is your wife fucking shops for you. Mm. Yeah. And then you just have to wear it. Yeah. Because it's, otherwise it's an argument. You're like, oh, thanks. <laughs> Another <laughs> argument. Or you just walk straight into Country Road. Yeah. And you just go. Yeah. 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 Country that's Road, why Country Maya Road, David Jones. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. why Country Road is. Because you could so safely long. wear a pair of Levi's Vans and a plain white t shirt until the day you die and still look Easy, fat, yeah. stylish. I plan to. But <laughs> for exactly. some reason, when you hit a certain age, you almost forget that and you start, yeah. maybe you start to experiment. Yeah. Maybe that's the key. Maybe you get to an age and you're like, no, I'm done with this now. I need something new. I'm going to and then splash you... out with a pair of shorts above the knee. Exactly. The artistic yeah. license starts yeah. to get a little bit wonky. Maya Summer Casuals. <laughs> yeah. It. Sales rack. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Because I'm in that world now where it's just like I don't follow modern fashion and I don't want to dress like I'm 19. Yeah, yeah. So you slowly – I mean, I've, fortunately, I was never too far outside the lines anyway, so I just wore – 
plain pants and like a plain it's exactly white tee. Classics. And there was for a while it was really working where fashion kind of made sense to me and I could just live on the, the yeah, what was the common denominator yeah. side of that. But like I stopped wearing shirts with logos on them. So like, you know, like palace t-shirts and mm -hmm. shit like that. And now I just can't go back to it. So it's all right now because I'm sitting down. Like I wear, I, I wear the fucking Uniqlo oh, the, the, standard the ass yeah, t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. Yep, which is slave labor and probably the worst fast fashion in the world. God, and there's worse. It, it, it can't. I don't know that they can be. Oh, I think man, she's like, Shine and all Sheen, oh, whatever it is. Yeah, like, yeah true. But yeah. think about how many department stores full of, yeah. full of, like we live in Perth and there true. is fucking probably 20,000 items in that store. Yeah, yeah. And they're all not going to be there next season. So That's a good point. This stuff is, the problem is for me is that new fashion is boxy and the shorts, are, the shirts are short. So I look fucking ridiculous. Yeah, tall king, you're not yeah. going to get away with it. Look that. at this. It's like, it's insane. Like if I reach for something. It's yeah, yeah, it's like. Uh, it's just like, so that shit is horrible for me. Yeah. Even to the point now, like I used to wear tall tees because I'm tall. It was just be regular And it just looked like a tee. <laughs> but they don't sell them anymore because no one fucking buys them. No, nah, you can get them on like Kiwi websites. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not even joking. Yeah. Like all the Usos. Hey, I'll like, tell you what, dude. Yeah. The Usos fucking kept Dickies alive for us. Dude, and then it's like come full circle. <laughs> yeah. Dickies are back. I'm like, back. I bought a new pair yesterday, mm -hmm. in fact. Yeah. I bought a pair, but I just can't commit to them. I buy these. I saw these. Yeah, they're, like, they're not too similar for that. From this now. is called this. This label's called Pando. Yep. And they're fucking sick. So oh, I the was P like, and Co. Yeah, P and Co. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I bought, um, I bought these, and then I was like, these are actually fully good. Well, it's by so far. I bought four pairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's the only thing I wear. You're a dad without having children. I'm a, yeah, fully, fully. I'm an uncle. I'm a full uncle. Yeah, wear. full uncles. Wear. I have like five pairs of these shoes that are exactly yeah. the same. There's a slight color differentiation between the Reebok logos. <laughs> That's all you need. But I've done that my whole life. I just wore Vans for like 10 years. Yeah. And then I wore like um, Adidas Gazelles. And then you try to get a bit freaky with the Jordans, realise that you couldn't do it. Just can't and then do they it. sat in the cupboard for fucking 40 years. Yep. And, and then, then you're apart. like, oh man, these things are going to go up in price. And then <laughs> you pick them up and they the soul fall falls off yeah. them. And you're like, oh yeah, that's right. These things were made in the fucking Chinese factory. You know what I right. love though is that, remember like 2013, 2014, when the sneaker craze was like, you know, popping off uh -huh. and there's all these like holier than thou sneaky guys who are like, yeah, I've got this dead stock, blah, 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 and I've got this. I'm like, sucked in. Yep. <laughs> you have an absolute crumbly mess mm -hmm. that you have is worthless. And now, now all you're good for is fucking making like uh, TikTok, TikToks of like, all of your shoes and how yeah, fast yeah, they yeah. are. Because I see so many, I've seen so many of those. Crying Jordan memes. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, I've got a pair of um, Jordan 3s up there that I'd bought years and years ago off Chan actually. And I wore, I was like, every now and then I'm like, I'll put them on. Yeah. And I walked to work and I was like, what the what fuck is, is this feeling? And the sole had completely come off. Check it out. It's actually fucking, they're yeah, working. right. Everyone will know this. You go full dad spec, just get like the giant thing on it. There you go. Oh yeah, peel off at the back. This was, they, these were like fucking yeah, wow. new. They were just, they were literally just, they, they, I didn't have the box, but they were just sitting in my yeah, wardrobe. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And that shit is, I think real. it's asbestos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think Jordan may have given me cancer. Yeah, they're <laughs> fucked. Yeah. That's for the crying meme. Yeah. <laughs> That's his revenge on the world. <laughs> yeah. Giving the everyone button. asbestosis. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty mental, though. Like, there is definitely, I think, I don't know that it's like necessarily dad spec, but it's definitely like a place when you get into your 40s where you're like, yeah. okay, I need to kind of still represent myself in a way that maybe separates me from the pack, but I'll just join a, a slightly smaller yeah, pack than, yeah. than average. Because I think that there is something in the polo shirt. Yeah, I don't know what it is. is oh, I, I can't Do you know do what it? I think it is? It's not a T-shirt and it's not a dress shirt. It's like that, that middle ground of like, I'm still hip, I'm still fresh, I'm not at the, the office. But I'm taking this seriously. Exactly. Yeah. I, th I think it's a just leave me the fuck alone. 
the this Polish is fine. Hat. This works yep. across the board. Mm-hmm. And I think there's another part of it where people go, okay, I, I'm a guy. I'm just a normal fucking dude. I like golf. I can wear golf shit yeah, everywhere. Yeah. So mm. like suddenly the you know the hat that, the, hat. the patter hat turns into a fucking Titleist. Titleist yeah, hat. Yeah, yeah. Um and then the footwear and the pants and stuff is like I'm always ready for, I, I can golf at I'm any ready time. For golf at I can any golf time. It, at the drop of a fucking pin. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then the the other side of that we spoke about last week is like mountain gear. The golf mm. core, the guys on when you describe the guy on the terrace. With like the... Oh, oh the Aaron Williams and the Chambers like, and shit. Stefan used to work at Street X for a bit. Oh, yeah. And then Stefan, he's now got um, a different job, more corporate And he, he made that joke when he was leaving. He's like, yeah, I'm going to be that guy in like the chinos with the Aaron Williams and the puffer vest. Yep, like, North Face puffer vest. Yeah, yeah. He is too. Yeah. Uniqlo polo. Can't go wrong. It's so funny that like um, all of those, you know, like Ralph Lauren... And Burberry got so co-opted by the graph. Dude, scene. it's so wild. But like, they so must just be like, like, how the fuck do we get out of this? How is that? How do those Venn diagrams overlap? Yeah, you know? it's crazy. How Nordica? do you have the Eche with the seventy-year-old guy going to run? I think it came from football hooligan um, <laughs> yeah, culture. I mean, yeah, because that they makes... were initially they were doing that because the traveling fans, the traveling English fans, when the European league opened up and they started going and playing in Europe. They would go over and there was all of these high fashion yeah. stores and they weren't set up for, for shoplifting. Just mm. because all of this all of the stores in the UK Racket. it was just like J D Sports yeah, had that shit yeah. locked down where they were like everyone was just wearing Adidas and stuff and they had a super high security. Yeah. But then you go to like Sergio Testini or whatever it was in um Italy. In Italy and they were like high end fashion stores. So six of these dudes are just walking in and there's yeah. no way that they could stop them from fucking taking what they wanted. And they were just racking everything and then coming back with it. So I'd watched a documentary on it and that's yeah, how okay. that that's how that, that makes spread. Sense. And then they were like, you know, we can actually go into the high street stores. Do the They're same not thing. expecting us mm. there. And they it took them a long time to Con on to that. And then when I was growing up here in Little England, there was Jungle Up. <laughs> yeah. The kids that I rolled with, they, you were cool if you had a hole in your fucking pants or your shirt because that was where you cut the fucking Oh, you cut the security tag off. tag off. And kids would wear shoes with the security tag on them. And then you have <laughs> like, a like Ablo. A, yeah, it's crazy. I'm just going to put a little tag on it and charge you $1,000 more. It's the high school equivalent of an uh, ankle bracelet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, I can't imagine anyone buying a Burberry cap and not expecting to look like a chav. Mm. The yeah. crazy one is you see there's queues. They've got all the high street stores around here. Get it. It's... There's queues at like Louis Vuitton. And you're like, all, like you kids don't look like you can afford rent. And, yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, I've got a fucking, you know, I've got a Gucci belt. It's how? like, did you just listen to a Drake song and you thought you yeah. could fucking Like, how much is a Gucci belt? I don't even know. I don't know, but it's between like three and five hundred like, bucks. That's insane. Nothing wrong with my miles away webbed belt. Dude. I wear I got a, a shoestring, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't even wear a belt. <laughs> Fuck you. I bought one for a wedding and I wear it for everything. <laughs> oh, I've got the same one, yeah, yeah. Shit, maybe we are dad's fashion. Yeah. Yeah. I'm dad fashion. I'm deep. I've yeah. been wearing the same shit for like 20 plus years, 30 years, I dare say. T-shirt, shorts, band T-shirt. Like Daniel gets really upset because he's like, oh, what do you think? I'm like, I don't care about brands, yours included. <laughs> like I won't wear it like... Design for it. I'll do the, you know, make you look good, but I don't care about brands. Mm. There's also a part of our era and coming through that kind of hardcore scene where I would, you never wear your own merch. Like nah. that's, that, that is like a. Yeah, it's cardinal sin. But everywhere else, that's fine. So even when I was designing for street eggs, it felt too close. Like I would wear bits and pieces. Yeah, there, yeah. But I wouldn't. It, it just felt like I was wearing my own merch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like people like, would be like, oh, good, yeah, sick. But I'm like, I also don't want to wear stuff I've done. Like I like the work I do. Mm-hmm. I don't want to like wear it. Yep. I like, like seeing other people wear it. Yeah, that's, that's exactly That's it. always been the biggest trip for me as a designer was I used to design for a lot of bands. Yep. So I'd do stuff for like Miles Away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and things like that, like Alleged and Break Even. And I remember going over East – when I was younger, 
and seeing like a bunch of kids come yeah. through. And I used to print merch as well. So I'd print a bunch of stuff that I didn't design. Oh, I remember your, your website. Yeah. And it was like, that was a good hustle. Yeah. And I was doing all the band merch. And that was they were that was what people were wearing. Like, yeah, that's it went exactly. From being, like Billabong and Rusty. Yeah, to, and like um, it kind of switched over to that kind of DC Shuko. Yeah, skate kind bands, of skatey things, and then it was just like wear. band tees. Yeah, and that was the biggest industry. And I was printing all of it. And yeah, I'd go over east and I'd see kids wearing shit that I'd printed or I'd designed. And yeah, I was like this is crazy. And then now I like will you know go to a music festival that the Street X box logo is. Still, yeah, 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 and. Even though I think you've pipped me now with the Street X, the, 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 oh, like the, street word, X, mark. the word mark, that is actually, I think it's more common now than the box. It's, it's not my choice. <laughs> Daniel gave me, he's like, yeah, I want something else. He's like, just do some options. I'm like, this is like a full process, Daniel. Yeah, this you is You can't, brand. I did it in one, like one afternoon. He's like, yeah, that's it. But that's streetwear. Yeah, that's exactly it. And yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. And it's, what you did was perfect. And it literally... It sits with the other one. Yeah, so that's, the funniest yeah. thing is that the STX box. So I, I approached Dan because he was working for us with the club stuff, doing yeah. the marketing. And he started Street X and he had someone else designing for him and he didn't have a brand. Yeah, yeah. And then he started the brick and mortar store and he was like, I sat with him and I didn't want to press, I didn't want to press him because I knew he was building something. But I was like, look, you know what I do. Yeah, yeah. I think what you're doing is great. I don't think it's represented as a brand. Yep. And he was like, neither do I. And I was like, I'll do it for you. And I think I did it for 300 bucks. Yeah. And it was like, because he's, he was just my fucking friend. Yeah, that's exactly it. And I did a sheet of logos on, uh, and it, initially it was the gold bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was like, yep, we'll use that. And we did like a Street X in like a um, serif font. Yeah, and that then, one sits, they're still all there. Yeah. Like we've still got like all the core branding assets. They're still and in there. That was just a one sheet, which I just kind of freestyled. And I also did the X with the line underneath yeah, it. Yeah, the bar, X bar one. Still, yeah. yeah, which still lives. Still so used, yeah. And then I did the... Um, the STX and the, the S with the, the small T and the mm -hmm. X that's in the box because that it was meant to be street. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like a, you'd have yeah, like a street, street plane. Yeah, yeah. S with the small T. So I'd done that. And then um, he was like, we'll make shirts out of all of these. So that whole shit. Doesn't sound like Daniel. We just did shirts. But he, we, he hadn't really, he'd done a couple of those fuck the market ones and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But he did them and we just blasted out like, I think it was six different tees for Christmas and they all sold out. And he was yeah, like, wow. I got more money than I've ever had. He's like, I was like, what do you want to do? He goes, I want to go Top to America and meet my fucking, meet the brands and stuff. And I was pretty loaded at the time from doing club stuff. Yeah. So I was like, I'll fucking come with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we went and met with, um, what was the brand? Was it Anything? Belief? Oh yeah, a New, New York thing. thing. And we went, we just walked cold into that store and those yeah. dudes were like, and Dan was like, oh, I fucking rep your stuff in, in Perth. And they were like, oh, sick. And we were talking to them. And I think they kind of thought we were a brand. Yeah, okay. And I kind of cottoned on to that. And I was like, we should do a collab. And then and Dan was like, yeah, we should do a collab. <laughs> like, yeah. So then we had to like go back to the fucking hotel or the, the Ecom and like be like, oh, shit. Like we're fucking doing this now. That's sick, and then man. it was like another range and this and that. Yeah, it just yeah. went. So the, 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 the label, the Street X label kind of went from there. And then Vertical, it was just like yeah. cues for tees. All the shirts were like, had some sort of an in-joke or yeah. like based around shit that we were into. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It was so like... And it still is so that to a certain state. extent. Yeah, and that's the beauty of it. It still maintains that, you know, yeah. like the Pina Colada Boys thing yeah, is when uh, we were all in fucking... Point Delby's of contention. Wedding. The Delby's wedding. What's the point of contention? Oh, so... It's, it's like I come from like a branding side of things for this. So I'm like, cool. Pina Colada Boys has a lot of story behind it. That can be a separate brand, especially now that your brand uh -huh. is big enough. Mm. It's like, yeah, do it. <clears throat> and I did it, rebranded it, did all this. And then Dan's like, no. Nah. <laughs> and then like last week he's like, yeah, yeah let's talk about Pina Colada Boys. I'm like, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> How about you take a long walk? <laughs> like, I'm not talking about this right now, man. I love that you get to big dog Daniel. <laughs> no, it's like I, I very much appreciate the relationship I have with oh, him. For sure. Because he can just go, you're a moron. Yeah. <laughs> and he'll be like, no, you're a moron. And we, we argue more times than we don't. But it's still progressive. It's still... It just means that you're both actually fighting for the brand. Exactly, yeah. And that's how I was when I was there as well. And I think that's the best way to do it because I've had people where you just realize that they are just like relying on you to be yeah. everything. Yeah. But to have someone come in and go, no, we're doing this and this, yeah. it's going to work. And even when you're like, I don't, that's not what I would want to do. Yeah, you do yeah. It, and then it fully works and you're like, oh, you fully know what you're doing. Like you probably have yeah. more, you're probably more, inf- well, he's definitely more informed on like what the market wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're, I think as designers, we're always trying to push like our own creative integrity in some way, yeah. but not having to stand next to it. So you can stand next to it when it wins. Yeah, that's exactly, yeah. That's, like, oh, it's just, it's, that's the client, the, the client that's was all wrong. Daniel's <laughs> idea. <laughs> that one sucked. That was Dan's. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, 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 that's exactly what it is. So it's like, I will design things to a certain extent, but I don't want that to be my stamp. I still want it to be dance. Mm -hmm. I still want it to be the Street X brand. So, you know, when he'll say, oh, let's do this, and I go, nah. And then usually two weeks later, I'm like, all right, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. It was like, terrible idea, but whatever. (laughs) This is probably a good spot to to switch. I just uh, consulted my Casio stopwatch and... uh, Told me we were just there for an hour. Do you guys need a piss? Comes in here. Oh, yeah. we're going to uh, switch over to the Patreon yep. for everyone that isn't on the Patreon. The Patreon is growing. It is, is growing. We're big dogs in the fucking scene now, eh? Club are good.